Good morning, Elon. The campaign trail continues across the nation, and right here at Elon, we've got a preview for the next primary election and the upcoming SGA elections. It's Love Your Body Week at Elon. How some students are using the week to talk about eating disorders. And our ELN morning concert series continues with student duo Cracked Vessels live in the studio. ELN morning starts right now. Good morning, Elon, and thanks for starting your day in Studio A. I'm Maya Eaglin. And I'm Paul LeBlanc. Today on the show, we have everything from a breakdown of Fashion Week to a tasty treat that can be made from leftover ingredients in your fridge. But first, this morning, an Elon alum who's been covering the campaign trail is gearing up for the South Carolina primaries this Saturday. Al Jazeera America senior producer David Douglas is live from Columbia, South Carolina. Good morning, David. Good morning, Maya. Good morning, Paul. How are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? Can you tell us about the election cycle that you've been covering? Well, we've been here in South Carolina since before the GOP primary last weekend, and it's been quite a ride here in South Carolina. Obviously, what was the major focus was, of course, the primary last Saturday, because the Republicans were coming into the state, moving to the South for the first time. There was a lot of talk about what the evangelical vote would do, especially here in the South as we moved into the Bible Belt in this primary season. And there was a lot of expectation around Ted Cruz, who had spoken openly and broadly about his faith on the campaign trail, about topics uh, like, like abortion, about gay marriage, about things things that he really expected would resonate with evangelicals. And come Sunday morning, Ted Cruz didn't carry a single county in the state of South Carolina. He was all by himself uh, on his stage on Saturday night in second place, but not where he wanted to be because he really expected he would be at the top. Instead, Donald Trump came out with his family in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and claimed victory in the South. And now we go into the Democratic contest, which is this weekend on Saturday. And it's expected to be quite a showdown between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. And Bernie Sanders says he has a fighting chance and that he can make a dent in Hillary Clinton's some 20 to 30 point lead, depending on which poll you look at. But I think most political experts ex uh, expect, rather, that uh, Ms. Clinton will do far better than Mr. Sanders in the state and really do as predicted. Thanks so much, David. Hillary Clinton is in good shape heading into South Carolina primaries as she received a major endorsement yesterday from Democratic Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid. Reid revealed in a CNN interview that he plans to endorse the former Secretary of State. This is the highest ranking Democrat to endorse Clinton so far. Reid urged fellow Democrats to get behind Clinton before the Democratic Convention in July. Meanwhile, her opponent, Bernie Sanders, has not been active in the state lately as Clinton holds a double-digit lead over Sanders in multiple polls. The Sanders campaign is already looking ahead to Super Tuesday next week, where 11 states will hold Democratic primaries. Sanders has been campaigning in Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. And tonight is the next GOP debate in Texas. This is the last GOP event before Super Tuesday. Donald Trump, Senator Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, Ohio Governor John Kasich and Dr. Ben Carson will be at the debate trying to sneak into the top three spots before voters head to the polls. ELN will be on the ground this weekend in South Carolina for the Democratic primaries. Rachel Ellis and Caroline Hartzorn will be covering Bernie Sanders' primary night event. Meredith Stutz and Elizabeth Bilka will be holding down the fort at Hillary Clinton's event. Follow us on Twitter at Elon Local News for live updates. And not only are we in the midst of a national presidential season, but it's election time here on Elon's campus as well. Tonight, Elon Local News will be hosting a live SGA election speech and debate show at 7.30 p.m. in Studio B. Tune in on Channel 5 or come be a part of our live studio audience as candidates share their speeches and debate. Student Body President Avery Stedman will also be in the studio to talk about her time in office. And elections aren't the only thing topping the headlines. Our Connor McCoy is here in studio with this morning's newsreader. Good morning, Connor. Thanks, Maya. Starting out local, the Burlington Police Department is asking for people to help identify a thief who stole a woman's purse outside the Walmart on South Graham-Hopedale Road a couple weeks ago. 
The police still haven't caught the thief and are now asking the public to be on the lookout for her. This incident serves as a reminder to make sure you keep a keen eye on your belongings so the same thing doesn't happen to you. And while Burlington police are trying to catch a thief, the Raleigh Police Union says they will not boycott Beyonce's concert when she comes this May. After her Super Bowl halftime show paid homage to the Black Panther Party, Beyonce is getting unfavorable responses from some police unions. Last week, the Miami Police Union urged cops to boycott Beyonce's latest world tour, and the NYPD are asking Beyonce to apologize for her performance and speak out against anti-police violence. But Beyonce isn't the only one with problems. Virginia, Mississippi, and Louisiana are cleaning up the tornado damage from the storm system traveling along the East Coast. According to CNN, seven people are dead following the storm, including a two-year-old boy found in a Virginia trailer. As of this morning, the storm left more than 100,000 people without power across several states and in D.C. And that's what you need to know this morning. I'm Connor McCoy. Yesterday, the weather was crazy with a tornado watch and a severe thunderstorm warning. But today, things seem to have calmed down. Our Megan Jernak is outside to tell if this weather is here to stay or if this is just the calm before the storm. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, Paul and Maya. Well, it's a little windy out here right now, but nothing compared to yesterday by any means. Thankfully, it looks like Mother Nature has gotten all that bad and gloomy weather right out of her system. And I have some great news for you this morning. It is not going to rain today. Instead, we're going to have partly cloudy skies with temperatures getting up to around 53 degrees with a low of 30 later on tonight. And the nice weather looks like it's here to stay as we also have a promising and sunny Phoenix five day forecast. The weekend is starting off a little chilly with a high of 49 on Friday and 51 Saturday and lows dipping into the 20s and 30s. But the warmer weather starts on Sunday where it will be 63 and sunny with a low of 43. And this trend will continue through Tuesday with 60 degree weather and sunny skies. So it looks like all that awful weather from yesterday is long gone and we're all ready to start getting into spring. I'm Megan Jernak, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Megan. Coming up after the break, we talk to Elon students about overcoming eating disorders and learning to love their bodies. And Cracked Vessels will be in the studio for a live performance and a special announcement. You're watching ELN Morning. One of the five Elon experiential learning requirements is service, and Elon offers its students multiple opportunities to fulfill this requirement with volunteer opportunities outside of the Elon bubble. Students can volunteer at a number of places throughout the week, including the Boys and Girls Club in Burlington. Elon students can volunteer at the club where they serve as tutors and mentors during the after-school program. Senior Elaine Beaver is a volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club and has made connections with the kids. I think it's a really great way to get outside of Elon and really connect with, um, you know, kids who aren't going through the same thing that we're going through. Obviously, you know, we're quite a bit older, but um, it's a really great program and you can tell that the kids really enjoy having the volunteers here. If you are interested in volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club or anywhere else in Burlington, contact the Kernodal Center for more details on how you can get involved. Now, I have not been to the Boys and Girls Club yet, but I've been meaning to go since I got here. It's such a great program, Absolutely, and it's it so easy to just go and help out. Right. It's so, I used to go back home, but now i got to start going. Now yeah, and what a great cause if you have some free time. Absolutely. Go yeah. help some kids in the community. It's just so easy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and with spring break coming up, college students across the nation are pushing themselves to get the perfect beach bod. But for many adolescents, the pressure to be skinny can be detrimental. Our Selena Guevara spoke with Elon students about their experiences and perceptions of eating disorders and the social climate surrounding that condition. In honor of National Eating Disorders Awareness Week, Sparks has teamed up with the Active Minds Club, Campus Rec, and Delta 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 Sorority to host Love Your Body Week at Elon. The focus of the week is to promote body image positivity, but also provide students with In honor of National Eating Disorders Awareness Week, Sparks has teamed up with the Active Minds Club, Campus Rec, and Delta 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 Sorority to host Love Your Body Week at Elon. The focus of the week is to promote body image positivity, but also provide students with the resources and opportunities to learn about eating disorders. 
Elon freshman and Sparks peer educator Jen Finkelstein says it's best to tackle an eating disorder with early prevention. You generally see them as like the emaciated figure or um, the person that is antisocial and doesn't go out, which yes, that's true, that happens, but a lot of the dangerous the dangerous aspect of eating disorders is they're usually not caught until they're that far along. Elon Jr. John Osborne struggled with eating disorders his sophomore year at Elon. He explains the mentality behind his anorexia and bulimia. This feeling of control there that even if I, I didn't like the way my body looked, I would be doing something to get closer to that. And my view of my body was very, very intertwined with my view of myself and my body representing myself very strongly, said that if I think I look like shit, then I must be shit. John Jr. Scott Powell thinks it's important for students to engage in conversations about body image and mental health in general. Powell says in today's culture, it's especially hard for guys to speak out. Weakness and emotions are viewed negatively um, among men. Osborne says the most important thing for people who are struggling with an eating disorder is to know you are not alone. The thing that I want to say is that if you reach out and if you talk to somebody, people will be there. Selena Guevara, Elon Local News. If you or someone you know is struggling with an eating disorder, you can reach out to Elon's Campus Safety and Police at 336-278-5555 and ask for the Confidential Advocate. Sparks also encourages all students to stop by their office in Mosley for mental health resources. With spring break approaching, so is the deadline for job and internship applications. And now is the perfect time to polish up your resume. Assistant Director of Career Services in the School of Communications, Amber McCraw, has some helpful tips for students looking for that winning resume. A, a big misconception is that students will come in with everything they've done you know, all through high school and through college. And I tell students, you should pick the things that are most important and the things that are most relevant. McCraw says it is important to keep your resume to one page, make sure your formatting is consistent, submit your resume as a PDF file online, and always have someone else look over it. Students can make an appointment at the SPDC to get one-on-one -on -one help with their resumes by calling 336-278-6538 or stop by during office hours between 2 and 4 during the week. The SPDC is located in Mosley. Coming up, Fashion Week may be over, but looking good never goes out of style. We'll show you how to look like you just got off the runway without breaking the bank. And after the break, we'll show you how to cook up your own mini fiesta with just a few ingredients. Welcome back to ELN Morning. Now, New York Fashion Week may have come to an end, but dressing well never goes out of style. Our Ali Deeds has some tips on how you can dress like you're walking down the red carpet while on a college budget. From Blake Lively to Kanye West, Fall 2016, New York Fashion Week was full of A-listers in the hottest fashion trends. I'm here with Brooke Lowry, who will be modeling my favorite trends from Fashion Week. Um, so the first thing that I had her throw on was this nude jacket, which we saw on Kylie Jenner, Blake Lively, Jordan Woods. Blake Lively wore it with a nude dress, so she brought in that mon monochromatic trend that we saw all throughout Fashion Week. Um, this was one of my favorite outfits she wore to the Michael Kors fashion show. And then I wanted you to do something a little bit monochromatic to just show everyone that trend. So I had you wear this black. This, I got the inspiration from Puma, which I don't know if you saw the show that Rihanna was in it, Gigi mm -hmm. Hadid, Bella Hadid. Not only were all the ladies killing the runway, but the men stepped out in all black outfits too. Kanye West debuted Yeezy Season 3, where he showed off the hottest men's fashion, sweats. Sweats were all the rage for men at Fashion Week this year, and Yeezy himself displayed this flawlessly. You can get pieces of the look for less than $50 at PacSun. All of this outfit you can get for under $50. You can get the jacket for $25 from Forever 21, the boots you can find from H&M, um, as well as the distressed jeans, and just throw on any plain black t-shirt and you look like you're ready to go to New York Fashion Week on a college budget. The next New York Fashion Week will be in September of 2017, but if you're looking for an excuse for a vacation, why not go to Paris Fashion Week, which starts next week? 
in today's entertainment news. Now, when you logged onto Facebook today, you may have noticed a change when you went to like something. Facebook recently upgraded from just a like button to a reaction buttons. Now, there are five reactions, including love, laughter, surprise, sadness, and anger. To access these reactions, simply hold down the like button and slide right. And finally, have mercy. The wait is over tomorrow. Uncle Jesse and Danny Tanner are returning to the screen with the Netflix original Fuller House. This is an updated series of the popular 90s show Full House, and there has been much anticipation surrounding the February 26th release since the announcement in December. The 13-episode season is said to be focused around DJ Tanner, played by Candace Cameron Burr, returning to her childhood home after losing her husband. Her younger sister Stephanie Tanner, played by Jody Sweden, and Kimmy Gimbler, played by Andrea Barber, decide to move in to, with DJ to help her raise her three sons. I cannot wait for Fuller House to come out tomorrow, so I know what I'll be doing this weekend. And on this week's College Cooking, our Caroline Hatshorn has the perfect snack to power you through your Netflix Fuller House binge. Happy Thursday, Elon. Today, I'm going to show you how to make the most out of your tortillas with some delicious bite-sized snacks. These mini pizzas and homemade tortilla chips will have all of your friends begging you to cook for them and are a great way to refuel in between classes. For this recipe, you will need a package of tortillas, a can of pizza sauce, a bag of mozzarella, and a topping of your choosing. To make the mini pizza rolls, start by emptying a can of tomato sauce into a bowl and put it aside for later. Use the can to cut three inch circles out of the tortillas. Once you have a stack of them, prepare a muffin tin with nonstick spray and line each of the indentations with two of the mini tortillas. Next, fill each tortilla with pizza sauce. Add cheese and toppings to your liking. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees and bake the pizza rolls for 12 to 15 minutes. Voila! After they have cooled for a bit, use a fork to remove the pizza rolls from the muffin tins and enjoy. If you have leftover tortillas or even scraps from the pizza rolls, make them into homemade tortilla chips. Spray a baking sheet with non-stick cooking spray, then cut the tortillas into bite-sized pieces and lay them all out. Coat with olive oil and spices of your choosing. In this case, we used salt, pepper, rosemary, and thyme. Bake for three to five minutes. Dig in and enjoy. You can make these over and over again with different combinations of spices and seasonings. It never gets old. For this week's College Cooking, I'm Caroline Hartshorn, ELN Morning. That looks absolutely incredible. When we come back, Crass Vessels will be in the studio as the ELN Morning Concert Series continues. Welcome back to ELN Morning. Our concert series continues. And today we are joined by Crack Vessels, the musical duo of Elon students Jacob Lenz and Tyler Meacham. The duo formed in 2013 after joining Elon a cappella group Twisted Measure. The two started writing music after they became roommates sophomore year. Thank you guys so much for being here. So I have to know, where does the name Cracked Vessels come from? That's a good question. So um, when we first started playing music together, we both read a book by John Green um, called Paper Towns. And there's a quote in the end of it that mentioned something about when a vessel cracks, like can get in, like can get out. And it kind of clicked. We were talking back and forth, like, what should we call ourselves? And we both said the same thing. And it was like, oh, OK, that, that <laughs> it works. It took maybe yeah. a month, but yeah. we got there. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Now, so you guys got a new album coming out. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, we're actually working on an album currently. It's going to be about eight songs. Uh, the release date currently, we believe, is May 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have a name yet, but um, yeah, it's going to have uh, about eight songs that we both wrote on it, and uh, including the song that we're about to play. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what are you guys about to play? What's the song called? It's a song called Moon, and it's brand new. We've never sang it before. So yeah. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for, for, for coming in today. Yep, so that's all we have for you guys this ELN morning, and we will let you guys take us away. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thanks so much for tuning in. That's all we have on ELN Morning. Play us out, guys. I've been watching the moon Might be it's staring me down I've been thinking of you And how can we fit In this little town I've been looking for why And I know It's useless to try to make sense of goodbye when everything's wrong 
when everything's right so just let me know when you're around and i will get lost if it means we'll be found when phases have changed maybe we'll love better Over my mouth Cause I'm sick With missing you I'll spit some words out To say I'm alright To say I'll make do I might be better without The day That I saw something Change. 